All right, our last uh, selector is Bill Clegg. He's a literary agent and the author of the memoirs Portrait of an Addict as, Addict as a Young Man in 90 Days. His debut novel, Did You Ever Have a Family, was long listed for several honors, including the 2015 National Book Award, the Man Booker, and the Penn Robert Bingham Prize. So here is Bill to, to name his selection. So many reasons why I love Moriel Rothman's Edgar's novel. So many reasons why he deserves the 535 citation. First of all, the book's gorgeous, alliteratively audacious opening lines. Everything was salt and sweat, summertime and sharpened swords. It's beautiful yellow book jacket. <laughs> the matter of fact, never sweated over sexual fluidity of its young male protagonist. It's devastating love story. Its authentic depiction of youth on the verge of adulthood, the intensity and openness, the wild swings between agonizing doubt and hubris to clarity. Its significant plot twist, which I for one did not see coming. Um, but mostly for the way it braves to illuminate not only the unique perspectives of Israeli Jews and Palestinian Muslims, the very particular histories and experiences that shape them, but also, and somewhat anomalously, the ones that they share, the shattering grief and injustice, the fierce loyalty and anger, and the love. I can't think of a book that has caused me to remember and embodied with as much compassion and beauty the words of activist and poet Rachel Corey, words uh, lately I've been grateful to be reminded of. They are us, and we are them. Congratulations. I'm grateful, beyond grateful. Um, grateful to you, Bill, for this election. Grateful to everyone at the National Book Foundation for this honor. Grateful to my partner, Kayla. Um, grateful to our daughter, Nahar, who's hanging out back in the hotel room. She's uh, three months younger than this book, um, so she's with the babysitter. <laughs> um, grateful to my agent, Julia Cardin, to my editor, Daniela Wexler, my publicist, Stephanie Mendoza and grateful to be part of a community, part of a world that reads fiction, um, that cares about fiction. Because I think what I've found in fiction, the sort of the home and the hope I've found in fiction, is this space in which multiple versions of truth and multiple versions of pain are allowed to exist at once. And not only are they allowed to exist at once, but they must exist at once for fiction to pulse, to be real, to be, to be what fiction should be. Um, so this, this page I'm going to read, and this page, Jonathan, a 19-year-old Israeli soldier, addresses his friend, his comrade, his love, um, Leith, from within a military jail cell. In here, Leith, the air has nothing in common with the THC-soaked breezes we once sipped to the rhythm of your sister's recitations. Here, a bird could only flutter in frantic circles until its wings grew tired, until it collapsed into a pile of sharp feathers and fragile bones. When they first brought me in, I was put in a cell along with seven others. There were metal bars in the windows, fluorescent lights murmuring anxiously overhead 24-7. Bulbous security cameras were posted in each corner of the room watching everything. We didn't look each other in the eyes. All our eyes were filled with poison. But at least in their voices I could latch onto something human. In the rush of their minor belligerencies I could find momentarily something external to despise. In the glow of their small kindnesses I could almost convince myself that I still deserve to fill my lungs. And at night, when everyone else was sleeping, floppy hats pulled down over sparsely whiskered faces, shielding them from the brightness of 100,000 daylight suns. I could creep between the bunk beds, stuffed with the sweating bodies of atrophying Hebrew warriors, and I could place my tongue against the wall and almost taste the salty winds that I knew were pressing against the outside. I could tell myself that it was you urging the winds forward toward me, your friend Jonathan Lace. 
what have I done? Down here, the walls don't press against the wind. There are no human voices, just shrieks and crashing metal, and the memories of birds, crumpled bodies splayed out on the ground. Above, I can hear the ceiling sagging under the weight of so much sand and loneliness. I am waiting for this starving land to open up and swallow me.